think, me personally, that I am the, one of the best boxers in the world, male or female. I think it's Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather, me. That's it. So as you know, Clarissa Shields recently challenged Keith Thurman to a boxing match after Terrence Crawford's dominating win over Errol Spence. And um, obviously, I think there's a lot here. For starters, Clarissa Shields is a woman. Keith Thurman is a man. As you can see, based on their stats, Keith Thurman has knocked out more men than Clarissa has boxed women. Just for context. Also, Keith Thurman's only professional loss is to Manny Pacquiao, who is 62, 8, and 2. For context, Manny Pacquiao has fought more times than Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali only fought 61 times. Manny Pacquiao has fought a total of 72 professional fights. And this is the only man that gave Keith Thurman a loss. And I think the main thing here is the current zeitgeist has created this idea in women that anything you can do, I can do better. And it's devolved into a almost narcissism. And Clarissa released this footage of her boxing men um, to prove that she's capable, which number one, didn't really prove anything because she wasn't that capable against these regular guys, let alone a Keith Thurman who's been a world champion against men. And again, has knocked out more men than the number of women that Clarissa Shields has boxed. Keith Thurman has 30 wins. Clarissa Shields has 14 wins in boxing, one win in MMA. Clarissa Shields has only knocked out two women in boxing, one woman in MMA, whereas Keith Thurman has knocked out 22 grown-ass men in boxing. And the thing is, Keith Thurman is still 34 years old. He's relatively young. And unfortunately, there's kind of no winning this for him because if he beats her, oh, you beat a girl. If he loses to her... Oh, you lost to a girl. But I think a lot of men want to see this because it's a, it's almost like a come to Jesus moment of at some point, women are going to have to deal with the facts and the reality of men's advantage over women being a physical one. And, you know, Carissa Shields, she's supposed to think she's the baddest. She's supposed to think she's the best. Um, but I'm saddened by the fact that our society has allowed her to delude herself to this point of thinking that she is capable of beating men. A good comp for this is actually Lucia Riker. In 1994, for context, I was born in 93, so this was 29 years ago. Lucia Riker fought a Muay Thai fighter named Somchai Jadi or Jadai. And if you Google that, you won't find anything other than Lucia Riker, which tells me that this guy that she fought was irrelevant. Some people have actually said he wasn't even a ranked Muay Thai fighter. For additional context, at the time, Lucia Riker was considered the Dutch destroyer. She was considered the Lady Mike Tyson. She had 17 boxing matches, 36 kickboxing matches, and was undefeated in both. For additional context, in boxing alone, Lucia Riker knocked out 14 women. Clarissa Shields has only fought 14 women and only knocked out two. But in the exhibition where she fought this unranked Muay Thai fighter, she was flatlined. And it's not to say that she wasn't as great as she was. She was a great woman. But it's another illustration of the physiological difference between men and women. Lucia Riker at the time was feared by every single female boxer. Again, for context, she has knocked out the same number of women that Clarissa Shields has fought, and she was flatlined by a nobody. I think that is very important context for Clarissa Shields, as she is now taking it upon herself to call out the former unified welterweight world champion in Keith Thurman. See, it's one thing if she had called out just a regular dude and I could beat you up, Jake Paul, or something like that, but... Keith Thurman does this. <laughs> Keith Thurman does this for real. But again, that 
baked in contempt, that superiority complex we talk about sometimes is very, very clear here. And it saddens me that she just so happened to call out a black man. I think I would feel better if she called out like Kayla Plant or something like that. But for whatever reason, she believes that she is physically and skillfully superior to a man who has knocked out more men than the number of women that she has fought in total. Now, that's not to take away anything from Clarissa Shields. Clarissa Shields is one of the best, if not the best, female boxer in history. She's a gold medalist at the Olympics, at the World Championships, at the Pan American Games. However, again, she's a woman. Recently, a clip of ours went viral, or it's going viral, actually, where we were talking about how a lot of our women, unfortunately, have been socialized to believe that they're superior to us intellectually, emotionally, mentally, and now apparently physically. And I think the reason why a lot of men are so riled up by this is at some point, we're going to have to call a spade a spade. And it doesn't take anything away from women's power and women's capability to acknowledge the fact that men are dominant physically. Like we cannot continue to live in this delusion in the name of not giving men credit or not allowing men to think they're better because they're really real world consequences for women. And I think a perfect example is what we're seeing with trans athletes dominating female sports. I saw recently that <laughs> the highest paid women are actually former men. So unless we are willing to start telling the truth, unless women are willing to start telling the truth, women will continue to get hurt. And maybe literally in the case of Lucia Riker or Clarissa Shields, or maybe in the replacement that we're seeing happen in women's sports. Women's sports are highly competitive, often can compete with men at the same level and win. What, what sports? like a woman playing against a man tennis player, you can see it being fairly competitive. Actually, it's funny because Andy Murray, he oh, he was been joking about myself and him playing a match. And I'm like, Andy, seriously, like, are you kidding me? Because for me, tennis and men's tennis and women's tennis are completely almost two separate sports. So I'm like, if I were to play Andy Murray, I would lose 6-0, 6-0 in five to six minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Because <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. It's a completely... It's a completely different sport. The men are a lot faster. They serve harder. They hit harder. It's just a different game. And I love to play women's tennis. And I, I only want to play girls because I don't want to be embarrassed. I would not do the tour. I wouldn't do Billie Jean any justice. So, Andy, stop it. Yeah. We're not going to, I'm not going to let you kill me. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. When it comes to tennis, I only want to play girls. This song goes out to Serena. Serena. It's called Can I Be Your Tennis Ball? Can I be your tennis ball, tennis ball, tennis ball? You can smack me up against the wall, baby. Do it slow or do it fast. Can I fit inside your bang, baby? One of the things I really appreciated about Serena Williams is she was honest. Serena Williams famously said that if she played men, she either wouldn't be ranked or she would be ranked close to the bottom. And she acknowledged the fact that men are stronger, faster. They hit harder the whole nine. And for whatever reason, that still was not enough to get the point through to women who are fair weather fans or not even fans at all that these are two different things. And she literally said, men's tennis and women's tennis are two different sports, but that goes for any other physical competitive thing that men and women engage in. That's not to take anything away from women. That's simply to have an honest conversation and also seek honest solutions and thoughtful and sustainable solutions to some of the issues like you know, the WNBA players have been complaining for a while that they are not getting paid as much as their male counterparts, even though they do, quote unquote, the same job. 
without acknowledging that they don't. WNBA basketball and NBA basketball, again, are almost two different sports. The excitement is different. The athleticism is different. And as a consequence, the fanfare is different. The attendance is different. The sponsorships are different. The revenue generated is different. And that's why the NBA has been subsidizing the WNBA for a number of years. Instead of acknowledging these truths and then trying to craft a game that can be competitive to the NBA, no, we would rather just do apples to apples, even though it's never been apples to apples. And that's why you see certain WNBA players having the audacity to say that they are just as good, if not better, than NBA players. I'm glad she's that confident in her ability. She's also a little delusional. I like the confidence, BG, but I don't know if that's going to happen. It's not a walk in the park over here. <laughs> she says you'd be no better than the third best host player on the men's team. Ah! <laughs> I'm just going to use that to fuel, fuel this. I mean, I'm better, but... Um, and I know that that kind of gets at him, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, little man. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the uh, the Scalenge, Brian Scalabrini. He went around the country playing random people who thought they could take him to basically prove the point that the bottom of the tier NBA player will dominate any regular Joe on the street. And that also goes for professional women as well. Because again, the physiological advantages that men have, it's not to say that men are better than women, but it's to say that men are more dominant when it comes to physical activities. And it's okay for us to admit that. And similarly, it's okay for men to admit the ways that women are dominant. Women on average are more nurturing. And that's why you see the fields that they occupy, nursing, HR, things like that. But this tit for tat thing that we're doing in this gender war, and we won't even acknowledge the advantages of the other. It's taking us nowhere fast. So my message to brothers is, and I've said this before, women are the embodiment of chaos. They, in my experience, do not prioritize rational thinking over emotional thinking. And again, obviously there are exceptions. Um, so for us to be coaxed into playing their game, we will lose, right? I don't think Keith Thurman should take this fight. And sisters, it is okay to admit that men are physically superior. That's not to say that men are more valuable. That's not to say that women are not valuable. And we can definitely do a better job at talking about the ways that women are valuable. But this place that we're going where women think that they're physically dominant and mentally dominant and emotionally dominant, it's obviously not true or sustainable, but the outcomes are gonna be bad. What happens when future generations of boys believe that, and now the unspoken rule of don't hit a girl no longer exists. And now you have boys with male den bone density, male muscle mass, behaving as if they're physical equals to women, who despite exceptions are not that. Yeah, there are women who can beat up men, but most women cannot beat up men. And it's okay for us to be honest about that. Elite women are nowhere near elite men when it comes to physical sports, physical tasks. Elite women are better than regular men. Clarissa Shields can probably beat me up, <laughs> beat up my homeboys. But the audacity to think that you are capable of beating a man who beats men, who knocks men out, and you haven't even knocked more than two women out. We, we can tell the truth. We can be honest. It's ridiculous. Okay, so if that's true, if men are the enforcement mechanism, why does that then mean that women's equality is a bad idea? Well, I didn't say it was a bad idea. I mean, it is. But what, what my position is, is that it's laughable that egalitarianism is even possible because women have no way to enforce their rights. They have to use men to enforce their rights. So since they have to use men to enforce their rights, they don't really have any rights because all their rights come from men. But why does the notion of egalitarianism have to be predicated on physical strength or like who gets to enforce it? Well, what else could it be predicated on? Principles of like what's best for society. 
And what happens if somebody violates those principles? Equal, sure. like, why would it be based off the enforcement? What program? happens if somebody violates those principles? What do you mean? Well, so if you have a society in which you have laws and government and things like this and whatever social social contracts you come up with, what happens if one side violates those principles or a person or an individual or a group violates those principles, what would you do with them? You would, well, I, I would think arrest them maybe or uh, punish them or do something punitive or put them in prison or something like that. And so you're right back to the enforcement mechanism again. So there's really no way around it. The enforcement mechanism is from men, will always be from men. And so it's paradoxical to say that women can have equal rights because even if they do have equal rights, it's just because men have allowed them to. What saddens me about this, like I've said in some of my interviews, a lot of our women do not grow up around male authority and some actually grow up without any men in general. So there's a trivialization of men trivialization of men's strength, men's pathology, men's psychology, the whole nine. And a lot of times, kind of like Clarissa Shields, when you're thrown in a world like combat sports where it's very testosterone heavy, you're supposed to think that you are physically better than everybody. Now, when you combine that with the fact that you don't grow up around men, you have no real appreciation of the chasm, the physical chasm between men and women because you're an elite woman. And then that baked in contempt that a lot of women in general, but especially black women have of black men, the result is this call out. The result is the average woman thinking that because of her experiences and because of her exposure, that men are just simpletons. And now men are even physically inferior, without understanding that this delusion only persists because men allow it to. Unlike most revolutions, most fights for civil rights, women's suffrage didn't come as a result of women fighting and dying. Women's suffrage came as a result of women convincing men that they need suffrage. And again, that's not to take anything away from women, but that's just to paint a clear picture of what things are. And this is why I'm so hard, for, for example, on simps and men who enable female bad behavior. Because without men, there is no OnlyFans. Shoot, without men, there is no WNBA. Because even the women on the street who think that WNBA players should get paid the same as NBA players because they quote unquote play the same sport don't even attend WNBA games. Those same women would much rather attend a Lakers game, a Chicago Bulls game, an Atlanta Hawks game, a New York Knicks game. And I can guarantee you, they don't even know when the championships are for the WNBA. They couldn't name more than three teams. So ladies, please, let's start being honest. And don't allow the delusion and the narcissistic spirit that's growing amongst the female delegation corrupt you. If you want to see more of this, please click that like button. It helps tremendously. And share this to somebody you think would gain value from the message. And hit that subscribe button as well. Peace out, y'all.